we are one week out from Election Day. Kamala Harris and Tim Walz in Michigan overnight. Donald Trump in Georgia as his campaign deals with the fallout from Sunday's Madison Square Garden rally. The candidates preparing their closing arguments for the final mm -hmm. vote. Stay the race as tight as ever. Pierre Thomas following election security concerns. Rick Klein standing by tracking the seven key battleground states. Rachel Scott is tracking both the control of Congress and the Trump campaign. But first, our chief White House correspondent Mary Bruce starts us off in Detroit on the Harris campaign. Good morning to you, Mary. Good morning, Robin. One week to go, and Kamala Harris is now trying to hammer home what she says are the two extremely different visions for America that voters are now facing. She's trying to mobilize her supporters to the polls and reach out to that tiny sliver of undecideds who may still be on the fence. Overnight in all-important Michigan. Are we ready to vote? Are we ready to win? Yes. And we will win. And we will win. Vice President Kamala Harris with running mate Tim Walls by her side. If you're feeling any of that anxiety, any of that nervousness, any of that worry, we've got the solution for you. Get out there and vote for Kamala Harris. Harris pitting her vision for the presidency against Donald Trump's. And I'd ask us to just imagine the Oval Office in three months. Okay? So just picture it in your head. So either it's Donald Trump sitting in there. Stewing, stewing over his enemies list, or me, with your help, working for you, checking off my to-do list. Harris accusing Trump of stoking hate and division after speakers at his weekend rally made racist, sexist, and bigoted remarks. Donald Trump spends full time trying to have Americans point their finger at each other. Fans the fuel of hate and division, and that's why people are exhausted with him. Crisscrossing this critical state, Harris eager to woo working class voters, lasering in on the economy and boosting American manufacturing. We're not going to have China beat us in the competition for the 21st century. Well aware the cost of living is top of mind for so many, Harris urging voters to compare her economic plan to Trump's. Donald Trump will raise costs on you and your family. In fact, independent economists have analyzed both of our plans and found mine will cut your cost and strengthen our economy while his will increase inflation and lead to a recession by the middle of next year. In a battleground where a small sliver of votes could make all the difference, Harris aware she has work to do. After facing pushback from some in the state's large Arab and Muslim community, Harris overnight addressing protesters calling for an end to the war in the Middle East. I hear you. On the subject of Gaza, we all want this war to end as soon as possible and get the hostages out, and I will do everything in my power to make it so. And she concedes she needs to do more to close the gender gap and win over men. Microphones picking up her conversation with the state's Democratic governor, Gretchen Whitmer, at a bar in Kalamazoo over the weekend. I've been bugging your whole team. I'm like, okay, we've got to do this, this, and this. But everyone's heard is that we look at her yeah. Oh, we have microphones in here. Oh, just listening hi. to everything. Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, You'll now bleep you my us. F words. We I just told it. all the family secrets. <laughs> Hoping to reach those key constituencies, Harris tonight will outline her closing arguments at the exact same site where Donald Trump addressed his supporters on January 6th. But this speech tonight, I'm told, will be about far more than just the threat that she argues Trump poses to democracy. Harris is trying to paint a picture of the kind of president she will be and how she'll deliver for the American people.